Welcome to Ships Tips, episode 21. Now on this episode, I've brought you to a lovely carp lake. It's called Plantation Lakes near Bristol. It's one of the lakes I've fished several times, mostly for silverfish, but there's also a lot of carp in. And this episode's all about hard pellet fishing. Now, this is a typical venue, I think now in the UK, when you want to catch the carp, you want to catch the bream and the big skimmers, but there's a lot of roach that can get in the way. And that's where hard pellets, you know, not just venues like this, but I think a lot of hard pellet fishing you do is because of the other fish that are in the lakes and you don't want to catch them, them small fish, you want to catch the quality. And that's what this episode is all about. But the first thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of prep on my pellets. Now, I've got four and sixes and eight mil pellets today. I'm not bringing any small pellets because I'm going to be fishing out into the lake and we're going to be doing, you know, sort of talking about hard pellet fish on the bottom. And it's one of the biggest things nowadays, you know, foul looking fish, getting lots of bubbles and not catching. I'm going to run you through all the little things that I think can make a big difference. But the first thing I'm going to do is get some clear pellet oil on my pellets. Now, you can do this at home before you come. You can do a batch in your garage leave them in tubs or you know bottles but i'm going to do mine on the morning just to show you guys exactly what i do i've got some pellets at home in a bucket so i just take them out of the bags put them in little buckets put the pellet oil on them and let it soak in and it can stay in there as long as you want so it doesn't go off but i'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to do i've got me four mils i'll probably put about half a bag in there and the nice thing is I can take these back home, like I said, put them in, the, in a tub and then use them next week. Now I've got my clear pellet oil. This comes in five different flavours. I'm using krill and squid. I looked at the water this morning. This, this lake is actually really, really coloured. And I think that smell, that sort of you know, fishy smell is going to be really, really good. And most importantly, clear pellet oil actually sinks. So when you put it on the pellets, obviously it coats the pellets. It takes the coating sort of, it stops the pellets from floating. And you don't want them floating around, you just want them to go straight down to the bottom. And that's what this pellet oil does. And it gives it loads of smell, loads of oil, which fish love, but it also stinks. It's amazing. It's the only pellet, it was the only oil that I've ever seen that you actually put it in water and it actually sinks. It's crazy. Anyway, like I said, I've got about half of sort of a pint or so of four mils. I'm gonna sprinkle this over the top, not loads, Absolute beautiful smell. I love them sort of fishy, spicy smells. Mix them around like that. And like I said, you don't have to do them on the morning. Sometimes I forget to bring some of the bash at home, so I just do them on the morning. Always carry a couple of those tubs in my bag. I think most of us could probably do the same. So there you go. You can see they're all glossy now. That's like soak in but it doesn't actually turn the pellet um, sort of soft either. It just gives it a nice coating. I'm gonna do some six mils as well. I think six mils are gonna be the bait for today. I'm just gonna to be honest. I think I'm gonna do the whole bag of six mils. Cause I think that's gonna be the pellet for today. Again, nice little squirt. So I've used less than a quarter of a bottle on two batches of pellets basically. Give that another Thing around like that. Lovely that. And then that's so key. And you can see they're all glossy the same. So I've got me me fours and me six mils done like that. I've not set up yet. I've just got me box down, got me top kits out, got me rigs ready to go. Just got to put my rigs on. And now I now know that one is going to give them loads of smell, and two they're going to sink like a like a rock. Really, really great product, and it's one of them products I use all the time. But anyway, let's get let's get round to the nitty gritty of things. Let's get some rigs set up, and I can talk you through about plumbing up, and obviously catching the fish. Ready to go now. I've got all my bait all prepared with obviously the clear pellet oil. I've got four sixes and eights, and I think that's really important to talk about. When you do a bit of our pellet fishing for a carp, we all know how deadly pellets are. You don't actually need that much bait. So whether you're just a pleasure angler or you're a match angler, hard pellets are just a great all-round bait. Now, rig-wise, I've got a 4B14 XS carp on, which I think is an absolute fantastic boat for this sort of fishing. 
I've got 019 reflow power mainline down to 015 reflow power and I've got a 16 KKM on. It's one of my all round favorite irks. There's the KKH version. I think a KKM today is gonna to be absolutely fine for this venue. You know, they, they do go quite big, but there's a lot of sort of three to six pound fish. So a KKM is gonna be absolutely fine. 13 Jora, which I love for fishing long. We're not fishing down the edge or anything today. This video is about catching long on the bottom with hard pellets. Now, one of the most important things I think is plumbing up. Now, one thing that I've probably spoke about several times in these videos, but some I'm just gonna actually show you is with hard pellets for bigger fish like carp, I do put a little bit more line on the bottom. Now I've already plumbed up, but I'm just gonna go through it again to show you guys. So my chosen plummet is 20 grams. I just like 20 grams. I know some of you might fish a real small plummet. You might fish a 30 gram, but 20 gram from me is just the all rounder. So I'm gonna ship out. I've got, let's just talk about shot. I've got a nice little bulk and I've got two number 10 droppers. Nice and simple rig. So this chip out, obviously I've had a bit of a plumb around before I actually set on the bit that I want to fish on. I've got myself marked up with like a little bit of wood in that far, far bank. And just drop this down. As you can see, I've got a little bit more line. If Jake's probably picking that up on the camera, I've got a little bit more. Normally I would plumb up to like there. And that, if you can see that, I've probably got about an inch, maybe an inch and a half more. And when I'm fishing for big carp or like good sized carp with hard pellets on the bottom, I put that little bit more on. So if I relax that, I'm probably fishing, I would say probably about that far on the bottom. It's just something that I've done over the last several years and I just think it's better. When you're fishing for smaller carp, you can actually fish your normal sort of body just out of the water, but I've got a little bit more on. Now, if I drop that in, that bottom, I can feel that plummet going in slightly. And I found a little spot there, it just feels a bit firmer. I've tried going over to the right and left. It deepens off a little bit there. And there's a few more bubbles coming up. And I'm trying to get a spot, especially this time of year as well, even though we're going into um, sort of October time. I think finding a nice area of your peg like that there. Look at that, that's like rock solid. I don't know why. There's no bubbles coming up when I drop the plummet in. And that's why I've chosen that spot. So I'm bang opposite, like a peg on the opposite bank. So you can see that, that's the plummet on the bottom. That's a tight line. So I've probably got just uh, probably half, half the stem of the float. All right, so that's a real good tip, I think, because there's a lot of, you know, there's always lots of talk about, you know, how you plumb up, how you stop foul looking fish. And I think that is definitely one of them sort of things that I've learned. You can always put, take a little bit off, you know, if you start getting really, really tricky little indications like that. But um, I found just putting that little bit more on with hard pellets. If I was fishing soft pellet, I'd just do my normal thing. Soft pellets are different. It's amazing when you go to different venues and the bites you get with hard pellets between hard pellet and soft pellets. It's really, really weird. And I can't really explain it. No one really knows. And we can only talk about what, you know, what's happened to us in the future. So I'm going to start off. I'm just going to pick. I've got some eight mils as well, but I'm just going to start on a six. Now, the whole point of this for me is to get the fish in your peg. I'm going to cad pot. I've got a medium cab pot on there. I'm going to cab pot just some four mils and look to feed a few six mils of a catapult. Now I can change that as we go. I've also plumbed up slightly beyond where I'm fishing. It's the same depth. Now, if I get problems with foul looking on the small pellets, and there's no doubt about this. I mean, it happens to me a lot in fishing. Sometimes to get the fish to respond, you've got to feed those smaller pellets. There's no doubt about it. And that's something that we've got to try and work out today. It's all well and good go into a fishery and they're really having a go and you can just feed six and eight mils. Sometimes you just feed eight mils, but some of the matches that I fish, you have to introduce four mils and even sometimes two mils, which I'm not going to do today, to actually get the fish to feed. It's really, really weird. And that's why we go fishing because it's all them sort of things that happen to you. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just be really Really, sort of quite negative with what I feed and you'll find with hard pellet a lot of the time on the pole 
you can be quite negative with the amounts you feed, but you catch tons of fish. So I'm just going to go out, I'm literally going to pot in probably like 25 um, four mils, I'm just going to put a couple of two mils on, uh, sorry, a couple of six mils over the top. Dip them in the water, just helps them stick to the pot, so you don't waste them on the way out. So I've got my roller set up nice, so I keep my top kit near the water. Bring it round to where I've plumbed up, and just you can just like shake them out like that. And I'm sure it's going to take a little bit of time. You never know. Drop that in. Hopefully, me um, float shot it up quite nicely. I might have to put a number 11 stot on there. Because I do like my float dotted right down, as you all well know. And it's a bit, it's going to get windier today, so we probably will have a little bit of float showing. Now, obviously, the first thing I'm looking for is obviously bites, but how much fizzing are we going to get? Because that is the biggest thing in fishing, is fizzing and not being able to catch the fish. We all have those problems. It can be a tricky one. And that's what this sort of film is going to be about, really, is what's going to happen on the day. We, don't, we just don't know from one day to the next or one week for the next how the fish are going to respond. But at the moment, I'm just going to be nice and negative. I probably will, you know, if I sit there for five, ten minutes without a bite, I'll pick a catapult up and catapult a few six mils over the top. But um, let's see what happens and uh, obviously I'll talk you through it as we go. We've been fishing about, I would say, 20 minutes, and I think already I tapped a few fours in uh, with a couple of sixes, sat there, caught a roach, and then I've just felt like, one, I've got to go careful with these four mils because obviously we're trying to catch the quality fish, whether that's bream and carp, that's what we're sort of fishing for. And after probably, I reckon, 15 minutes, I thought, so I need to make something happen here. So I've got my catapult. I've catapulted probably quite a few six mils. I just felt like there's nothing happening. I need to put a bit of bait in. And that's what you've got to try and get in your mind is it's all well and good. And like I said at the start of the film, every day slightly different. Some days you can just tap in a few pellets and we might have to do that later on. It just depends on how, you know, what happens to the peg. But I catapulted like 46 mils. So 20, 20 over top of the float, sat there couple of little bubbles coming up no plumes of bubbles you know them plumes of bubbles can be a problem sometimes because that means the silt is really soft these are just odd little bubbles straight away i've caught a five pound carp and i've caught a, be a couple of better skimmers so at the moment i'm just going to go back out i did actually have a, an eight ounce skimmer on the last cast so i'm just going to go back out now i'm not going to feed all the time So I've give it 20 pellets, 20 pellets, six mils, caught a carp, you know, a little fish then. What I don't want to do is sort of, I don't think I want to sort of feed constantly. I want to try and keep these fish down and sort of not blast feeding it, but giving it a bit and then just leaving it. Obviously you can cup them in as well if you want, but I think catapulting makes a bit of noise. A little fish then. That's the only thing with by making too much noise. You might drag all the roach in your peg because there is a lot of roach in this venue. So I'm just sat nice and patient. A little bit of float showing, not a lot. And the bites I've had have been amazing. I think fishing that little bit of line on the deck 
that's what I've noticed with hard pellet. You, especially on this venue and when you're fishing for better quality fish, the bites are amazing just fishing a little bit more line on the deck. You see there's an odd, odd little bubble coming up. Now that could be, you don't know, it could be skimmers. You know, I think all of a sudden today, what will happen is them carp will find the bait, start feeding. Because it is one of them venues, this. There's, an, there's a couple of big islands. I think the fish, sometimes the carp, sort of, they're out in the main lake and then they just come in. And when they do decide to have a proper go, then you might have to just use the cad pot and just cut back on the bait. That's what's so interesting with lot, sort of a lot of baits, really, not just hard pellet. So I'm being nice and patient. Obviously, you've got the, the option of going to eight mils as well. There's a nice little, like, three or four bubbles just past the float. Got a line of probably about, I would say, two foot between... Probably just under two foot between the, the elastic and the pole, the pole float. So I can hold it out there nicely. If things actually got really going and I was missing lots and lots of bites, I can actually reduce that length of line between the elastic and the pole float and literally just hold it over top of the pot of the float and just sort of lift into your bites. But at the moment, it's not sort of solid it's just an odd bite and i'm sort of and the bites are quite aggressive as well i've not actually missed a bite i've missed a couple of i've had a little couple of little tiny liners and stuff but the bites i've had have been proper like i'm having that as you can see like that float sits there lovely there's a little indication there and i probably shouldn't even have picked up on that that's probably a little liner of something Probably a roach just sort of swam into the line. I'm just trying to feel my way into it, you know. I'd like to have sort of put, like cad potted a bit of bait in and got bites really regularly and I just don't think that's going to happen at the moment. I think we've got to work a little bit harder, you know, catapult some bigger pellets, make some noise, get some bait in, and get the fish rooting around. You know, basically trying to get the fish into your peg. But not feeding all the time. I think that's just, at the moment, I think that's just gonna drag the wrong fish in your peg. They'll be all off the bottom, swimming around, And it's weird, as I said to Jake, it's like weird that all of a sudden you get a little, it's like you get nothing, you don't get no bubbles. And then all of a sudden you get like a little area of bubbles come up. Like not, it's not one fish, it seems a couple of fish. And it's trying to work out the timing on when you actually put a little bit more bait in. There's always the option of just coming back, putting like six or eight pellets in your cad pot, going back in there. Because when you catapult in, you do catapult in an area, which is nice because you get the you get the fish in an area, especially when they're not really having it. I think that's so important with not just hard pellets, with lots of different baits. I do it a lot when the fishing's a little bit tricky. Is pick the catapult up, get the fish in an area and then trying to get them down to your, you know, trying to get them to come to your hook bait. You can probably see from the camera now, there's a few bubbles coming up. There we go. Skimmer this time. Beautiful bite, eh? Not the biggest of skimmers in here. Look at that little thing. Amazing. You'd be amazed what these little things can eat. They might put sort of six ounces. I'm going to change that pellet. I 
and it can change so quickly. You can go from an odd fish to get one and shut. And what I'm going to do is just cab pot like six or eight, six mils in. If them skimmers become a problem, we we'll start introducing some eight mils. So I'm not trying to be too sort of, just want to get some bites at the moment because we've not been going long. So just chap them in a little bit of an area. Straight down with your rig. And then we'll see now, just cab potting those pellets and see what happens. It might be a catapult day, it might be a cab pot day, like I said, you never, you might have to do a bit of both. a liner. Or was that a small fish? I think that was a liner that. So that floats like a two mil two mil bristle. Brilliant for fishing with like big baits like six and eight mil pellets. And they sit amazingly even with like a bit of a side wind, a bit of skim on the water, they sit amazing. A nice fiberglass stem. A couple of little bubbles come up. Might be skimmers at the moment. But you just you just gotta go a little bit carefully, don't get a you know, don't lose like don't get blasting bait in at the moment. I fed more than what I thought I was going to feed straight away because there was no response from it at the start and I thought right I'm going to give it some, see what happens, caught a carp and then straight away I've managed to get some, you know, some indications. And always have the option of going past, like I do with my surface fishing. You know, if you're going to a venue, potting in pellets, and you've got lots and lots of fizzing coming up where you're potting the pellets in, have the next section or a butt set, you know, a little dolly section where you can just go past a little bit, especially if you're catapulting a few pellets as well. That can be massive. You might not get lots and lots of liners, but you're fishing there with a single bait on and you get the bite rather than the liner. I think the hardest thing in this sort of fishing nowadays is stopping foul hooking fish. And that certainly helps by just fishing past. Yeah, that was definitely a bigger fish then. Little liner, little plume of bubbles. Add a liner. I am trying to wait for like a, a, a nice, you know, nice quite a positive bite. Nice fishing actually because it's not it's not crazy. This is like what I sort of wanted for the video really. It's all well and good when you go out and tap a few pellets and then catch one every chuck, but when it's a bit like this, when you've got to think a little bit more, I think this is what you know a lot of your match angling sort of your fishing's about. A little indication then. So I'm thinking at the moment, it won't be too much longer before I pick the catty up again. There we go, look at that, look. Just as it settled that. So that carp was there, that little indication, I reckon it was a liner. And I get asked a lot, Des, why do you fish sort of like, you know, even in the height for summer, you fish like 13 Jorah? When you fish long, it's so much nicer to place fish on. Obviously, if I was going somewhere, I was catching a massive weight, then I'd obviously up my elastic. So when you're fishing long, it's so nice to play fish on. And I think at the moment, my gut feeling is I'm going to be catapulting a little bit and then just cab potting and trying to fish on those few pellets that I'm cab potting in. And I think a lot of my hard pellet fishing is like that. If you don't catapult, a lot of the times now, you don't get the response that you want. 
Oh, that's come off. What an absolute gutter. That's a good fish as well, that was. What a gutter. Never mind. Well in the mouth. Definitely 100% hooked in the mouth, that. Let's try that again. That happens. There's nothing you can do. It's sort of gutter because it felt like a sort of eight or nine pound fish, that. So tap them. There's an odd little bubble coming up. Just tap them out in a little line. Not going to down the same. Just drop that straight down. I'm not holding me float out of the water or anything like that. It just goes straight down. That actually went in just as it sort of settled. Went straight under. I think it's probably just gone past the carp. And it sort of sucked it in. Obviously, if I was getting lots of indications, lots of stupid indications, I'd be on eight mils. But at the moment, it's all right. It feels like I can sort of build the peg up with sixes. If it was really tough, I know I'd probably even catapult fours, but with getting a few little roach over top of those initial four mils, I thought straight away I've got to go a bit careful with them. Little plume. Yeah, it's definitely a carp in the peg just past now at the moment. Just trying to hold that dead still. That is one thing with pellet fishing. The conditions can make a lot of difference in the amount of bites you get. This is the little bit now where I'm always thinking when do I, if, if or when do I loose feed when I pick that catapult up. Don't want to overcook it. I basically want to get the fish in my peg and get them in the mouth. about that carp that was a good fish that there we go oh that was a skimmer i think you see what's happened there's a big plume of bubbles coming up where that fish i think it was a skimmer it was going to jump out the water i think and then come off so it just shows you that bottom is quite soft out there that's where you just got to be very careful. So basically what I've done since we started, I've catapulted out twice with, you know, quite a few, not, I said, wouldn't say loads of pellets, but probably it ain't five or six, it's probably like 20, maybe a few more twice to make a bit of an area. I've got an odd little bubble come up, which tells me that I've attracted some fish. They're starting to sort of, you know, pick a few baits up. And then I've cad potted right on top of my float. But I've also now got to go a little bit careful at the moment on when I lose feed again. Because what I don't want to do is create loads and loads of bubbles and not be able to catch the fish. And obviously the worst scenario is foul look everything. And obviously what I'm doing that at the moment, I've obviously lost, well, whatever that was there, I think it was a bream that was gonna jump out of the water. Cause they do jump in this lake. Now I've got to think to myself, right, do I come back, cad pot, a few more pellets on top of me float? 
And this is our sort of information I'm trying to work out, not, you know, not just with what I'm doing today, but all sorts of fishing. I think I'm just gonna give it a few more pellets with the catty. Oh, there you go, skimmer. Better size skimmer. I don't mind that because I know my bait's here in it, which is nice. Slightly bigger, about a pound that one. Don't mind them in your matches, all build up. Really important in a lot of match fishing now, a lot of venues you go to, those size skimmers. Change that pellet, always change the pellet. Try and pick up those slightly bigger ones in the bag of fin sixes. Got a medium band on there. The hands have gone all slimy. Like that. So I'm going to just tap in a few and I'll probably catapult a few as well. And I'm sure, you know, we've only been going like half an hour, I'm sure the fishing will get better and better and we'll have a little system going as we go along in the day. So I'm just going to catapult a few out as well. And because of the fizzing's not horrendous, I feel like I can give it a bit of bait. Just trying to get a little bit short. I don't want to. I don't want too much bait going past. So I've catapulted twice. Like it's probably like forty pellets gone in there. And sometimes you can sit there and not get a bite. Catapult over the top. A little indication then. Probably a skin bob. And your flutter goes straight under. Normally a bit when it's a bit colder. I would say. The water temperature is still really warm at the moment. It doesn't matter where you fish this in your peg, you could be fishing with short fishing, long fishing, you can treat hard pellets exactly the same. It's lovely when you're fishing short, you know, when they have it. You know, you can up one, fire like four or five pellets in, go back in, get another one. That, that can be exactly the same on the long pole. Not as easy out long. A lot more work involved, and that's what I'm fishing long today, to show you guys what goes through my mind to try and make the most of it. Now, there's a big plume of bubbles coming up there, look. This is all well and good if you get the bite and you hook it in the mouth. That would have been a liner, guarantee it. This is where you've got to be a bit careful. Yep, skim it. There's definitely a carp there before that though, so they're not, that's the thing nowadays. Definitely 100% that the skimmers, the roach feed with the with the bigger fish like the carp there's no doubt about it i remember years ago if you had a carp come in your peg it would go completely dead until you actually probably could up the carp but these are little weight builders lots of matches now no matter where you go in the country you can catch these whilst you're fishing for the carp you can catch 40 50 60 70 pound on a lot of venues i'm not going to feed again with not neither with a catapult or a pad. And you know, many of my matches now is involved in catching, you know, 
depends on ven what venue you go to, but if you can catch those nice weights of silvers, as long as they're good quality silvers like those, it makes a huge difference to your winning weight. So I didn't cab pot in that time because I just felt with cab potting in the last time, giving it two, you know, two little pouchfuls of pellets. The nice thing is there's nothing, there doesn't seem to be many carp, even though it's still quite warm, there doesn't to be there doesn't seem to be many carp. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice. I love this time of year. When everything just starts slowing down slightly. That was a weird little bite as well. I thought it was going to be a skimmer, that. So not putting any bait in that cast, I think, was the right thing to do. And now what I'm playing now, I'm thinking, what do I do next? <laughs> but that's what your fishing brain's got to try and work out. I feel like now I'll just come back and cab pot. Feels like a good fish as well, that. 100% in the mouth, you can see it nodding. Some good fish in this lake. Just trying to get it away from where I'm, um, I'm fishing, it'd be handy. Oh, not. Happy chappy. You see how coloured the water is? You've got to be able to see that white elastic down probably just a couple of inches. I'm a bit careful, someone might say no, 15, bottom. You can see how good those floats are, oh, reading the bites. Especially when you're fishing with um, thick main lines like 019, 021. They are absolutely awesome. If I fished an F1 maggot today with 019, it just wouldn't sit there like that. So it's getting close, getting close to netting now. Not as big as what I thought. It's just very, very angry. I think the, I think the line was around his dorsal fin for a bit. But I don't mind, you know, reading it, just holding back, not putting nothing in. And that's what I think you've all got to do when you're doing this sort of fishing. Obviously, you, you will foul look a few. It's the name of the game nowadays. You know, unless you're fishing on rock hard bottom. Oh, he's a good one. Six or seven pound, I would say. You see that coloured water, really thick. That'll do. Nice fish. Angry, very angry. Woo, 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 woo. I'm not going to attempt all that. A lot of commons in this lake, and they're normally angrier than the mirrors. So now, what do I do now? That's the gamble. I think I'm going to go out with the cad pot just cab pot in like eight pellets, eight sixes. Just make sure that's all nice, all your hair rigs all set. Lovely fish, you know. You see how smooth that is? I've got my roller set up so nice that it's like, there's no mess, there's no jumping. That's when your pellets end up coming out of your, your pot. And I'm not messing about that, I'm just dropping that straight down. I think with that colour, because the water is so coloured, I think you'd actually, I think it'd be quite difficult to catch anything on the drop today. Oof, that was a liner. 100% a liner, even that were a very small fish. I'd have hooked that if that had been in the mouth. Mm. 
I'm just trying to hold, it's a bit difficult because I'm trying to hold that if I can. When I start getting more bites, I try and hold my pole tip right over top of my float so I'm straight into the bite. But it is a bit breezy at the minute. I love fishing with like six mils though, when I can catch everything. I'm quite happy just plodding along with sixes. I feel with sixes I can like read it a bit better. I can always put an eight mil on the hook, but with sixes I can, in my mind, I can read I can drag fish in me peg. I can read what's going on better. I don't know. I don't can't record, sort of explain why. I just feel I'm just more confident. And a lot of the venues I go, you've got to catch. You know, there's skimmers, there's bream, carp, F ones, and I'm going to sit there now for a little while, and then make a decision then whether I catapult again. Which I think, that's, I think at the moment, we haven't been going long, I just got that feeling it is going to be the day where you can give it a little bit of bait with a catty, not all the time, and then let them come in and then try and get them right on your hook bait. There's an odd little flutter of the float, but I think there are little fish swimming around off the deck. And you can just, you know, just be be a little bit patient, especially at the start of your session. I think you can blow it if you're not careful. I know you can move lines, you can plumb up and start another line. And then that's an option if you think oh, it's gone, I can't catch there. there go. Little skimmer. So now I'm going to get this out and do what I've done on my previous carp was to pot a bit in and catapult. Look really nice fishing. It's only problem with them skimmer, it takes you a little bit of time to get the slime off. Everywhere I go fishing at the moment, the skimmers are so, so slimy. Fished a match yesterday and it took you longer to get the, the slime off to get another bite. Make sure your hair rig's all nice and straight. So I'm going to tap like six or eight, six or eight, I don't count them, six, eight, ten, something like that. See the people after the match and say, how many pellets you said? They thought I've had six. They had to And I'm like, yeah, you always had them out. And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, right, yeah. yeah. I've never really done that. Approximately, for me, is good enough. And I'm just going to catapult a few now. So there's probably like 15 there. And about another 10. Lovely. Let's see what happens. Obviously, you're going to go through stages of, especially earlier in the session, where the skimmers may be getting in the way a little bit. But believe you me, like any sort of fishing, it can change very quickly. And it depends where you draw on your match. And that's exactly another point, is when, you, when you've drawn a, quite a tough area, I would say, on a lake on some days, those skimmers can play a huge part, and they do, for me, in a lot of my fishing. Straight away, so there's a few more bubbles coming up. Now, that could be skimmers. I'm not really bothered, really. I just want to get the bite and get the fish. 
Oh, a tiny little bite then. The nice thing is, a lot of some of the venues I go to at the moment, you would get a liner, and the liner is from the fish, which is so close to your hook bait, and you see like a trail of bubbles go off. It's so annoying because they, they touch your line nowadays and they're off. And I reckon my mo my thinking behind that is give yourself a little bit more line on the bottom where they can actually come up to your bait and not touch your line. I know they can touch your line through and around anyway, but if that hook bait is just led on the bottom a little bit more, they can suck it in before they touch the line that's going down. That's my sort of theory on it and it's definitely worth trying. And it, only, it works best on, I think, on silty, soft bottoms, which most lakes are nowadays. The nice thing is there's not millions, there's no roach feeding, or very little roach. I've only had one. This feels like it's going to go under with a quality fish. <laughs> Get in. Hopefully, Jake, the best carrot man in the world, has caught that bite. That was like a, like a pace bite. Did you get it, Jake? Uh, Jake? Yeah, he's nodding his head, so that was good. And that's what it's all about. I love making these films when it's like, when the fishing's like this, when you can, I think for you guys, it's really important to see what goes through our heads. And I know every venue's different, but um, doing lots of coaching now, um, I think, you know, try, I, try, I do try and point you in the right direction of everything that I do. And then you can go out and beat me, which ain't great, but, and I think the standard of angler I was only chatting about it the other day. I think the standard of anger nowadays in matches is massive. It's such a difference. It's made it a lot harder for our, us guys, but that's what we're paid to do. But honestly, you can see that, that float. I mean, when we produce those floats, I, like, I do like quite thin bristle floats, but when I, when I cart fish like this with them floats, they are, that, they are brilliant. Oh, a bit of a ghosty. I do like a ghosty. Yeah, he's worth holding up. Oh, quite nice fish actually today, not bolting off crazy. I think that's the colour of the water. When you go to um, lakes with real coloured water, sometimes they don't bolt off so much. Certainly enough, I know that. So what I'm gonna do now is get this one in, go back out, do what I've done previous. Something you've got to think about, you know, what you've done previous. Let's try and hold him up for the cameras. Yeah, beautiful plantation ghosty. An old six mil six mil hard pellet. Don't get better, does it? Beautiful fish, that. Let's get him back. So, go back out now. It's really nice. I'm really enjoying this, actually. Because it's perfect for the film, what I'm doing. It's not chaos. Make sure that band, that band's smack in the middle of the pellet. I'm just going to go out now. Like I said, six, eight, ten, six mils. Just tap it in the water. And that oil, that pellet oil, I think is great when you're fishing off I am. So I'm just going to put them in a little line. And drop my hook bait as best I can in the middle of them and get yourself 
sort of get yourself ready. I'm really concentrating in a lot of my fishing. I do concentrate, you know, on my float. And, and just to talk about, you know, if it was fizzing really, really badly, I honestly think in my mind, you can tap your pellets in. It's, it's one of the hardest things now, is when it's fizzing like a jacuzzi, is just fishing just past your bait if you can. There we go. It's all starting to kick off now. So obviously tapping a few in, great bite and I, I'm convinced fishing that little bit of line on the bottom I, I, I've done a lot of this and I obviously do mess about when I go pleasure fishing and since I've put that little bit of more line on the deck you can't always do it F1s and stuff like that a lot of the time it's just not quite right but when you're fishing for quality fish like this Definitely give it a go, no matter where you, even if you're fishing down the edges up against an island, just try it. It's like half a float bristle, uh, a float stem. Perfect elastic for the job that. So what do I do next? Do I go back out? If these things are starting to feed, I think I'm just gonna go back out and cap pot another sort of eight or 10 pellets in and then see what happens. If I sit there for five, 10 minutes, nothing happens, I catch a skimmer, give it a few of the catapult again. But less is more sometimes when, I, when you're hard pellet fishing. Another ghosty. Ooh. So simple little setup, bulk, two droppers. I mean, m possibly if I was in a match situation and the water wasn't as colored, I might even have a 4B12 carp excess made up to catch through the water. But with that colour, I've done, I've done a lot of fishing. It was back in the close season years ago, and I used to go down to Devon quite a bit because that was the only place you could fish. And a lot of the lakes down there were really coloured. And I found then, back then, that a lot of the fishing was all about fishing on the bottom. There wasn't much to be caught on the drop. And when I got here this morning, I thought, God, that's really coloured. Obviously, the fish are probably feeding heavy. Jesus, steady, steady. Oh, I'm not going to hold this one up. He's not happy about the situation. I'm quite happy about the situation, but he's not. Let's get that out there. Come on. Another disgorger job. So, I mean, so you get that little bit of line and it's just sort of inside their mouth. So change that up, mate. Check your check your rig. And one of them sort of elongated six mils like that. Just a bit bigger than the the rest of the batch. So I'm just going to go back out. No fizzing, already any bubbles again now. That makes you think, there's not been massive plumes of bubbles, it's just been an odd bubble. But in my match fishing at the moment, some of the pegs I've been drawing, it's like you've got to get it fizzing to actually get a bite. Off of a, off of a big fish anyway. I think I could catch maybe two carp before I pick a catapult up again. The skimmers have definitely sort of 
faded away, which is, you know, which can happen. If they don't fade away, just go through it a little bit. You know, you can feel a little bit more of a catty. It is, honestly, it is massive that you guys go out and get in to holding the pole and feed them in a catapult because without it, I think you miss out on so many fish. It is massive. So I've had two carp since I last picked the catapult up. So I've hooked one, got it out. Have a little indication then. That wind is really awkward at the moment. But picking that, I'm sure, you know, Today, and like I said to you, every single day you go can be slightly different with hard pellet fishing, depend on the venues, the size of fish, and I can only sort of do what, you know, that's what these films are all about, is putting you, or putting me into situations. Bear in mind, I've not come here. I actually only come here to do the sealfish matches in the winter, so it's even better for the camera, or for the film, that I go to a venue, which I don't fish for carp, and I don't know what's gonna happen. So, you know, it is like, this is like reality. This is the, you know, this is what happens. And um, I think today, for certain, as soon as I started with those four mils, I honestly thought the bottom would erupt really quickly and that's not happened. And I've not really, it was just like I was sat there and until I picked that catapult up, and I just felt in my mind, the way it was, the way it was, it was not hectic. I could actually feed a little bit more bait than probably what I first thought I would. And it's like now, I feel like now, I have missed a couple of indications, but I think we're probably little liners off a of silverfish. I'm gonna pick that catty up again and fire some more six mils in. Everything's just slow down. So what have I got there, like 10? Another 10, so 20 pellets. And I think that's good. definitely 100% gonna be the story of the day. But it can change slightly, do you know what I mean? If you start getting bit, I don't think we're gonna get bitted out today. I think the silverfish have gone, probably gone a little bit funny for this time of year, which is really nice to be honest. Because they can be an absolute nuisance when you don't wanna catch. And I think it's going to be the story of the day. And um, I think it's been brilliant for the film to actually see what's happened, what goes through my mind. You know, within 20 minutes of starting, it was pick the catapult up, got to make some noise. I want to cut the four mils out because I'm sure we'll just drag the wrong fish in our peg with, um, with them. And six and eights it will be today, but sixes are really good. I've not actually fouled up to fish. I have lost um, a carp and one skimmer, but you, you know, that happens. But just bear in mind, if you were in a match situation, you had a nice little start, mid-match, it's gone really bad. That's when you can introduce a few four mils again and that sometimes can fire the fish back up again. And then you just go through the same process, you know, try and sort of get them onto the bigger pellets again. Just trying to hold that as still as possible. Just feels like it's gonna fly under. <laughs> And a little liner then, amazing. Oh, it's a bream. A little indication. That fair play for that bream, it sort of sat on the bottom and it looked like it was a big carp. But anyway, I'm, I know you've picked up some tips. It's been a great day to um, pick up some tips on hard pellet fishing. I'm not worried about, we've had plenty of carp. I'm not worried at all about finishing on a nice little 12 ounce skimmer. I said, I hope you picked up some tips and uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe for this um, Sonia Bates 
YouTube channel to see more great videos like this one. Thanks for watching.